Hi, thank you very much. Um, I'm Charlie Young, or Charlotte Young, I respond to both. Um, I am co-founder and director of the Girls Network um, with Becca Dean, who is sat at the front there, so you can ask her questions too. Um, we're both ex-teachers, and I thought, you know, this would be nervous, but actually, compared to uh, standing up in front of a Year 10 class for the first time, it's not so bad, so I think we're all right. Um, I want to start by telling you a story about a girl called Maria, who I met um, about a year ago. Maria was 16 years old when I met her. She lived with her father and four young siblings, and her mother died when she was eight years old. She wasn't shy, but she was evasive. She wouldn't engage conversation with you. Um, she often wouldn't make it to school because she was looking after her siblings. Frequently, her family had to make the decision between buying school books and school equipment or buying food for the family. She didn't really expect much of herself. If you spoke to her, she had no ambitions beyond staying at home and looking after the family. She didn't expect that she could get anywhere else. I think what shocked me most about meeting Maria was that she lived in London, in my city, in a city that is affluent, in a developed country. Maria lived there. Girls like Maria, living in this poverty, were there. And that really, really shocked me. And I think I always knew girls like Maria were there, but I was walking around with blinkers on. It was, there was so much going on, so many problems. And I think a lot of us do this. There is so much that it, it's too much to do something about it all. And so you focus on what you're doing. And I'd maybe give five pounds to charity, make myself feel a bit better, but then carry on doing what I was doing. These girls were there, but they weren't my problem. And then I became a teacher. And then they became my problem, sat in my classroom. And it was my responsibility to do something about this. Um, and teachers amongst you will know that you cannot separate the students in your classroom from their context and from their background. That comes with it. And so I had to do something about it. And these girls had a lack of value for themselves, a lack of self-worth. They just didn't expect anything of themselves. They, if you ask them, what do you want to do? What do you want to do when you're older? They had an answer often. Oh, I want to be an architect. I want to be a criminal psychologist, a girl called Zara told me. Fantastic, that's so exciting. And you probe a little bit deeper and say, okay, so what are you going to do? What are you going to study? Do you know anybody that does this job? No. And actually, it's not really a reality for them. It's an answer to a question. But their reality was, well, I'll probably look after the family and stay at home. And that's a fantastic thing, where that's a choice. But for these girls, it wasn't a choice. It was actually all they knew. All of the women they knew were playing this role and nothing else. And in fact, they didn't think they could do any other jobs. They saw jobs out there. But uh, Becca took a group of school children into the city, took them to the Gherkin, and they said to her, Miss, why are those women wearing suits? She said, well, they're going to work. But women don't do that. And I think that really shocked us. These girls really didn't have an understanding that this could be a reality for them. And so this lack of network that they had really, really was inhibiting them and inhibiting what they could do. There's a statistic sorry, that um, says you find your work experience, or 50% of all work experience is found through your social networks, through existing social networks, which is great if you know all these fantastic professions. But for these girls, that's really, really limiting. And so Becca and I thought, well, hang on a second. We do have networks. We were very lucky to grow up in schools and communities and families where our parents, including our mothers, were working. And our friends' parents were working. My mum's not a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant, but my friends' parents were, so I could access those jobs if I wanted to. And we knew loads of women working in PR, HR, doctors, um, engineers, and we thought, let's get them in. Let's at least show these girls that this is something they could do if they wanted. So we brought in lots of women we knew, and we had a speed mentoring event. If you've ever done is very, very exciting. You get a real buzz. Um, and just after two hours, the impact that it had had on these girls... And oh. <laughs> Got competition for the... <laughs> Thanks. Magic. I'm also a ventriloquist. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you. Um, so, speed mentoring. Really, really exciting. Um, and these girls suddenly had this added motivation. They were like, okay, actually, I could do that. There are women that are doing that. I could do it too. 
And they also saw that there was a link between where they were now and where they could get to. And there was a series of steps, and actually there was no reason why they couldn't get to that job. <laughs> and again. <laughs> um, and so we set up the Girls Network Mentoring. We thought, there is something here. If that happens in two hours, and all of our, our friends and the women that came in were saying, can we give them my email address? Can they come and do work experience with us? There was a lot of generosity with spirits. So we thought, let's set up the mentoring. Um, and so we did. And what I really want to say today is about how transformational this mentoring can be and how transformational it can be to have someone dedicating their time to you. So for the girls, for Zara, who wanted to be um, a criminal psychologist, she had her mentor there working on her CV, talking about interview skills, about getting work experience. How do you do it? What physically do you do? Um, who do you email? And then how do you communicate? So if you go into an interview, if you meet somebody, what do you say? How do you approach somebody you don't know? How can you talk about your interests and what you care about? All these things that, even as adults, is quite hard, but these girls didn't know where to start. And actually, it's very empowering being equipped with skills and thinking, actually, I now know how to do that. That's really empowering and the, the self-worth they got from that. But possibly more still, actually, was having somebody that didn't have an obligation to spend time with them and invest in them, but having somebody that had chosen to. So our mentors are volunteers and they choose to spend time. So Zara had a woman choosing to spend time with her every couple of weeks over a whole course of a year saying, I believe in you. I think you're worth spending time in. And that was most transformational. It's actually also transformational for our mentors. One of my very good friends, Jessie, is a doctor. And she heard that we were setting up the mentoring uh, program. And she said, I'd love to be a mentor. Fantastic. Come along to a training event. We'll match with a mentee. About two days before the training, I got a phone call saying, Charlie, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I've got anything to offer. Jesse, you're a doctor. Do you know how many of these girls want to be doctors? Do you know what experience you have, having worked hard, taken the right exams, gone through the process of getting to the right university, the resilience you've shown? You have an understanding and an experience and a skill set that is so valuable. And thankfully, I was convincing enough, and she came along. And she'd been mentoring for about six months now. And the impact that it's had on her in terms of recognizing that she has these skills and she has these things to give She's now mentoring in the workplace as well. She's now mentoring in her hospital. And she's putting herself forward for um, job promotions. And she's got a newfound confidence from doing this. And I think, actually, it can be transformational to be a mentor as well as to be mentee. Um, another thing that we didn't expect to happen, actually, was the following. So we thought, right, we've got our mentors. And we've got our mentees. Fantastic, giving advice, investing time. And our mentees giving stuff back too, talking about their experiences. But we were getting our mentors together and this breadth of experience. And we realized that mentors were sharing ideas and were connecting professionally and personally. And the mentees were doing the same, talking about what they wanted to do, where they were going to go to university, what they liked. And we realized that we were actually creating a network. This network that the girls were missing out of, on in their personal lives initially, we were creating with our mentors and our mentees. And then we were really pleased that we'd called the charity The Girls Network. Um, I do just want to stop and very quickly talk about why just girls, because we do get asked this a little bit, um, and so I want to address it now. Um, firstly, because the issue that we saw was with girls. There are issues for boys as well, and there are lots of charities dealing with those issues, but it was the girls that we saw who really had a lack of self-worth and, and really didn't expect much of themselves. Um, secondly, people say, well, hang on a second, that's fine, but... Girls do better at DCSCs than boys. Surely you should be focusing on the boys. And it's true. Overall, girls do better than boys at GCSC. But you go up to A-level and boys are catching up. You get to degree level and boys are graduating with more higher class degrees. And you get into the workplace and men have more senior roles. Men have more influential positions. Men are sometimes paid more to do the same job. If those GCSEs aren't translating into better jobs, better incomes, better lives, then there's a real problem there. And that's the problem that we're trying to address. So I want to go back to Maria and tell you how she's doing now. I saw her a couple of weeks ago. She's been working with her mentor for just under a year, and the transformation has been phenomenal. 
Starting as this evasive girl, not engaging with you, she met me, she looked me in the eye, and she started a conversation. And she was telling me that she's now going to take a gap year, given that she's not left her postcode, she's going to travel halfway around the world. She's going to um, go to university, which she's not considered before. And she wants to work in social care to try and help those people that have come from the backgrounds that she was coming from. So a fantastic transformation in just the course of a year. Before I end, um, I'd just like to try something. I am a teacher, so bear with me. A little bit of audience participation. <laughs> um, just sitting there, I'd like to ask you, if you think that you could transform the life of a girl like Maria, can I ask you to put your hand up? Fab, okay, I reckon about half of us. Really, really good. Okay, um, now, a bit more complicated. Um, I'm going to give you a series of statements that you may or may not think are true about yourself. When you hear one that you think is true about yourself, can you put your hand up and can you keep it up in the air? Um, firstly, have you ever changed direction or career path? Have you ever faced a challenge that you've had to overcome? Has anyone ever told you you're a good listener? Have you ever had to go to somebody else to ask for advice because you didn't know the answer? Have you um, ever had to make a really tough, tough decision and maybe had to ask somebody else for advice? Okay, look around. I think everybody has their hands up, except perhaps for those people that don't agree in audience participation. <laughs> um, what I want to say is you could all be phenomenal mentors you all have something to give, whether it's to the girls that we're working with, or to boys, or to people in your workplace, or to people in your community. You all have amazing things to give. So the last thing I want to say, I want to say to you, recognize what you have to give, and then give it. We're very good at saying, oh, I've got nothing to offer, I've got no skills, I'm not very good at that. Recognize what you do have, and give it, and you can make a huge difference. Thank you. <laughs>